In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at sample space diagrams. So when two events occur, it can be very useful to display the possible outcomes in a sample space diagram. So here's a typical example. A dice is rolled and a coin is flipped, and it says draw a sample space diagram to represent the results. So this represents all the possible outcomes. So you've got a head and a 1, head and a 2, head and a 3, head and a 4, head and a 5, head and a 6, tail and a 1, tail and a 2, tail and a 3, tail and a 4, tail and a 5, and tail and six. So this uh, diagram really clearly um, outlines all the possible outcomes you can get whenever you roll the dice and flip the coin. So let's have a, some questions based upon this. So here we've got the uh, same diagram and it says uh, find the probability of getting a tail and a three. So altogether there's 12 possible outcomes. So it's going to be out of 12 and a tail and a three, well there's only one possible outcome for that. So it's going to be one out of 12. Next question says, what's the probability of getting a head and a prime number? So let's all start by writing down what our prime numbers are. So the primes, well, because it's the dice, let's just go up to six. So we've got the first prime number will be two, and then three, and then five. Uh, one's not prime, four's not prime, and six isn't prime. So it says a head and a prime number. So the head and prime numbers would be a head and a two, head and a three, and a head and a five. So altogether, that's three out of the 12 outcomes. So the probability would be three twelfths. And you just cancel that down. You can divide both of these by three, and then that would give you one quarter. So the probability of getting a head and a prime number is a quarter. So here's a typical exam question. And it says here we've got a spinner with four sections, and here we've got a spinner with five sections. And the four-sided spinner is labeled two, four, six, and eight. And the five-sided spinner is labeled one, three, five, seven, and nine. And Louise adds the scores together and she records them in a table. So this is your sample space diagram here. And you have got your four-sided spinner. So the possible outcomes on that will be two, four, six, and eight. And the five-sided spinner, one, three, five, seven, and nine. And the results go inside of the table. So she's adding them together. So one plus two is three, one plus four is five, and so on. So let's put in the missing number. So this one would be seven plus six, and seven plus six is 13. So we'll put in our 13 here. This one would be eight plus seven, so that's 15. This one here would be your six plus nine, so again, this is 15. And this one here is eight plus nine, so that's 17. So we've put in our missing numbers. So let's then have a look at the typical questions based upon that. So we've got our table, we've got our results in there. Uh, just keep in mind that your possible outcomes would be your three, five, seven, nine, five, seven, nine, eleven, and so on. Uh, make sure you don't look at these. These are your individual results for the, each individual spinner. The, the results you can get whenever you add them together are your five, 10, 15, 20 results here. It says, what's the probability of getting a seven? So let's have a look at that. So the sevens, so there's one, two, three sevens there's possible you can get a five and a two a three and a four or a one and a six so there's three possible sevens out of five ten fifteen twenty so the probability would be three twentieths it then says what's the probability of scoring a number less than ten so the numbers less than ten well in the table the numbers less than ten are three so you've got that you've got your fives you've got your sevens and you've got your nines so all of these numbers here are less than ten so the probability would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Out of, again, 5, 10, 15, 20. So 10 out of 20. And of course you would cancel that down. So divide both of them by 10 would give you a half. So the probability of getting a number less than 10 would be a half. So that's how you'd fill out a sample space diagram. Quite often they start it for you in the exam and you've got to fill out the rest. And then the probability questions, you just need to make sure that you are looking at the results and you just answer the questions based upon that.